what do all these very average looking men have in common? That's right, they're all dictators. And that means they love power, they hate journalists like me, and they are, quite frankly, ridiculous. I'm on a journey to three former Soviet Union countries to find out what makes some of the world's most powerful tyrants tick and to see the good, the bad, and the completely mental about living under a dictatorship. This time, Belarus. The country is next door to Poland, slap bang between the EU and Russia. Alexander Lukashenko. It's been ruled since 1994 by President Alexander Lukashenko. So, what does it take to be a Belarusian dictator? Well, you've got to look the part. And of course, that means a military uniform, even if, like Luka, you've only ever done national service. If you're ever doing any sport, you'll need a huge, adoring audience. Alexander Lukashenko, commander president of the Republic of Belarus. And showing that your goons aren't scared of hurting people is essential. In fact, Luca's managed to pass himself off as such an alpha male, he can even get away with watching this. So, I'm on my way to Belarus. I want to give you a little taste of what's to come. And I'm going to do that by showing you a video. It features this man, who is the German foreign minister, happens to be gay. Es handelt sich bei Herrn Lukaschenko um den letzten Diktator Europas. And the guy who runs Belarus. Я так вот услышал это, подумал лучше быть диктатором, чем голубым, конечно. And there you have it, the key rule of dictatorship Belarusian style: don't be gay. It's going to be a fun trip. Getting into these countries is hard, so we told the authorities we were making a travel program and none of the interviewees would know it was actually a series about dictatorships, for their safety and mine. So I'm on the way to Alexandria, which is the actual birthplace of Lukashenko himself. And although we have filming permissions in Belarus, things get a bit more precarious here due to the fact that this is the place that he was born. So I'm not entirely sure how things are going to work out, or even if we'll be able to film at all. When we got to Alexandria, we were allowed to continue as long as we had someone official with us. I'm Benjamin. Larissa. Under Larissa's watchful eye, we headed for the big man's home village. This isn't actually the village that he was born in. This is the village he was raised in. The village he was born in is over a bridge somewhere, but we're not allowed to go there because it doesn't look quite as nice as this one. So this is the place they want to show us. First stop, Lukashenko's old school. So, for example, Ah, so sweet. A nice family lad. Nothing to suggest he likes locking up his opponents. Are people very proud who live here because this is the home of Lukashenko? Ну, конечно, для деревни, в которой мы проживаем, конечно, это большое, большая честь для нас, что родился президент страны. Мы вот так и говорим детям, чтобы все равнялись на нашего президента, а для этого нужно учиться, учиться и еще раз учиться. But apparently, there is a shortcut to becoming more like him. Lukashenko has often talked about a magic spring in the woods. I read somewhere that he believes that the fact that he drank from the spring is the reason that he then became the man he is today and even president. Is that true? Ну, вы знаете, как говорится у нас в народе, что по вере каждому дается. Если вы верите в то, что с вами произойдут какие-то изменения, они произойдут. So here's some locals actually drinking some of the sacred water right now. Supposedly, people come from across the country just to drink from the spring that Lukashenko drank from. I'm just wondering why you drink this water. But to really tap into the essence of tough guy Lukashenko, to get the full benefit of the spring of eternal manliness, I'd heard you have to bathe in it. It looks like the pit of death. Oh my goodness gracious me. It's actually minus two degrees Celsius. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? 
perhaps just remind yourself, Belarusian men do it. They are big and strong. I want to be big and strong too. Oh, all right, sometimes people exaggerate from tele television. This is not one of those times. This is absolutely fucking freezing. All right, here we go. I can feel it. I can feel the energy. Oh no, that's hypothermia. That's what that is. I felt like a changed man. Oh God, look at my nipples. They're about four inches long. Oh. There we go. Being in the spring, got the big man's coat on. This is it. Never felt like more of a man in my life. <laughs> Headed to the home of Lukashenko's power, Belarus's capital city, Minsk. Doesn't feel like Europe's last dictatorship, I'll be honest. There's loads of really fancy cafes, fancy perfume shops. If I wasn't freezing my tits off right now, I could well and truly be in Italy or something. Although it's a beautiful city, Brits hardly ever come here. Most of us only hear about Belarus once a year. In the 2011 Eurovision Song Contest, Anastasia Vinikova represented Belarus with this beauty. And guess what? I get to meet her. Anything I've ever heard of Belarus, it always seems to be like a kind of scary place, place that no one ever goes to, very Russian, very Soviet. One of my uh, main goals was to destroy doubt stereotypes about Belarusians and our country. After my performance, Belarus was tagged as one of the most discussed topics, topics. in the whole world for almost 20 minutes. I mean, some people in the West would think that you didn't have as much freedom here, you didn't have as much free speech. Mm -hmm. Is that true? We are not so different from Europe. We have the right to vote, we, uh, we have our constitution. Do you think most, most people like the system here? Yes, quite a stable country without no protesting. It's true that there isn't much protesting here, but maybe that's not surprising because of what can happen if you do step out of line. The secret police are famous for beating up protesters harassing journalists and locking up opposition politicians. This building behind me here is the Secret Service of Belarus. You have to be a bit careful about filming it as we're not really meant to. It's called the KGB, which as you probably know was the name of the Soviet Union Secret Service, which was infamous for being just ruthless in its search for information, killed people, basically snooped on the entire population. No other former Soviet Union country still uses the names of the KGB, apart from Belarus. You don't want to look at it, because get in trouble. Despite his firm grip on power, Lukashenko still doesn't take any chances. He rigs his elections, he doesn't really seem to care if the world knows about it. Since taking power, Lukashenko has rewritten the constitution so that he's pretty much free to make any law he wants. And he can more or less live out any fantasy he likes. Ice hockey is his favorite sport, and the Belarusian media regularly reports on his exploits on the ice. He likes getting quality players together so he can pretend to be one of them. And there he is, wearing the number one jersey you can probably guess what team usually wins. Lukashenko's plowed hundreds of millions of dollars into building ice hockey stadia around the country. The biggest, right here in Minsk. Wow, <laughs> this is most definitely the noisiest sport I've been to for a long time. Unnecessarily loud. <laughs> if there's one thing I knew about Luka, it's that he doesn't like gay people. So I wondered what it was like to be gay in Belarus. I'd met up with Oleg Raskov, a TV journalist who covers LGBT rights. 
people just trying not to show that they are gay. Uh, and, uh, sometimes nobody knows about it, only really close friends, uh, not parents, not in the work, and just hide it. The station Oleg works for is banned in Belarus, so they have to broadcast from neighboring Poland. I mean, it surely can't help that one of kind of Lukashenko's most famous quotes is, it's better to be a dictator than to yeah. be gay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We had to have uh, two gay bars in Belarus, and uh, after this expression, every week was uh, police raids really? on these places, yeah, and uh, everyone were in a club, was write his, his name, and like, we're watching you, we know you are here, and we can control uh, you, and uh, after that, Rates uh, one uh, bar was closed. Imagine, say, we are two gay guys, and all of these guys find out. What would their reaction be? Probably we should run away fastly from the air, because many of these guys will try and pick our face. Really? Yeah, yeah. Lukashenko isn't the only local leader who appears to have enjoyed the spring of eternal manliness. Until recently, his closest ally was his neighbor, an all-around alpha male, Vladimir Putin in Russia. But apparently, when Putin sent troops into Ukraine, Belarus's neighbor, poor old Luka got a little nervous that the same could happen to him. So all of a sudden, to make friends with Europe, he started releasing political prisoners. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. On the outskirts of the city, I met Benjamin. up with someone who spent more time in the local cells than most. This is a big dog. Is this to keep out the KGB? <laughs> yes. At 28 years old, Pavel's been to jail 19 times, once for more than eight months. Why become the, the face, you know, of a kind of opposition movement and make life difficult for yourself? It's possible that it's just because I'm an idiot. But if I don't do this, I'm just going to get angry at myself to look at the mirror and see what I'm doing. Did you put this up because I was coming? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Only today. To try to keep smiling during his spells out of the cells, Pavel makes home-brewed spirits. We start degustation with a stick of kiwi. На киви в смысле. Сделан исключительно из натуральных продуктов. И я вам больше скажу, тут столько витаминов, э, что он скорее даже полезный, чем вредный. So this is basically medicine, is what you're saying? Yes, yes, yes. I will be cured of all my ailments. <laughs> Fantastic. Pavel became a minor celebrity in Belarus a couple of years ago, when one of his protests landed him and his friends behind bars, yet again. Мы взяли э, много мягких игрушек и э, плакаты со смешными э, протестными лозунгами. И поставили все это напротив дома правительства. Всем или почти всем э, дали по 15 дней ареста. First tonight, a story that the government of Belarus doesn't want you to see. The protest went international when a Swedish organization in solidarity with Pavel flew into Belarusian airspace and dropped 1,000 teddy bears with pro-democracy slogans. Lukashenko was apparently terrified by the teddy bear invasion. He fired the head of his air force and expelled the Swedish ambassador. Yeah. <sighs> this one looks a bit heavy. And his henchmen have kept an eye on Pavel ever since. Do you think we could be bugged right now? Потому что я уверен, что там стоит прослушка. Мы с женой замечали некоторые странные вещи пару раз. Я никогда не обсуждаю дела по телефону. I mean, it just sounds like a ridiculously stressful life. То есть то, что я на свободе, это не моя заслуга. Мне уже там тысячу раз угрожали, что мы там себе наркотики подкинем. И я понимаю, что они это могут сделать. И я уеду сидеть лет эдак на девять. <laughs> I was beginning to appreciate how all the moonshine could help take the stress out of Pavel's situation. Ugh, I think I'm getting to the point where I'm off me tits. Off me tits? <laughs> I don't know. What is it? You don't know. <laughs> off like tits. I know just, what is tits, tits. <laughs> but I don't understand what you so mean. I am off my... It's just a tit. I don't know why. I don't know where it comes from. I don't know the etymology. <laughs> But it's an accurate description of how I'm starting to feel. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you very much for meeting me. Thank you. Good luck. Hopefully I won't get arrested in about 10 minutes. All right, so I'm not going to lie to you. 
I am definitely a little bit smashed. Probably had about seven too many shots. But, um, but yeah, meeting those guys was, was genuinely interesting. I've spent like the first half of my trip here um, thinking that it didn't really seem that bad. The streets seem quite normal. It's quite a nice city center. And then these guys have really put it all into perspective. Once you go against the regime here, once you go against Lukashenko, life changes for you. And it changes very dramatically for the worse. Back in the center of town, there was more evidence that Lukashenko might be lightening up a bit. So just around this corner is something I really did not expect to see in a dictatorship, which is a opposition protest rally. This is the anniversary of a referendum that Lukashenko held 20 years ago to this day, which essentially allowed him to stay in power forever. So this is what they see as the moment that he became a dictator in this country. The man everyone had come to see was Nikolai Stakovich. He was released from prison a few months ago. He spent four years in jail for daring to stand against Lukashenko in the last presidential elections. Yes, yeah, it's being live streamed everywhere. I was beginning to feel a bit more positive about the state of Belarusian democracy. You would not expect this to be even allowed to happen. But then I looked a little closer. Instead of filming the speaker, a lot of the camera crews seemed to be filming the protesters. This, the KGB come with cameras to basically get the protesters' faces on camera and also just to intimidate people. And I think this guy behind me is doing nothing. Um, so I'm gonna see what he's doing. Excuse me, what's happening here? Are you filming for the media? No comment. No comment. Just filming for KGB. <laughs> Excuse me, can I just ask you a quick question? Are you filming us for the media or KGB? What are you filming me for right now? There's another guy to the left, right? Your left. It is a bit weird and intimidating, I can imagine, especially if you live here. Some random dude won't talk to you, sticks a camera in your face, wondering what's going on. Is it possible to get an answer? This is kind of awkward. So the protest is pretty much over. The only people who remain are me and about 12 people from the KGB. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was slightly pooing my pants. Uh, and that was quite a small protest, but I can kind of understand why you wouldn't want to go to one, mainly due to the fact that there is a reasonable chance that afterwards you'll end up in jail for two weeks, or quite simply, just have the shit kicked out of you by the KGB. My time in Belarus showed that Lukashenko is still a brutal authoritarian ruler. But there are at least some signs of hope. On the one hand, it's obviously not a blossoming democracy. But on the other, it is going through a change. It's going through this period of liberalization, which as you've seen means people can protest. They can speak out a bit more. They're going to jail less. But the question is whether that's like an actual concrete change or whether things are gonna keep getting better and people will keep getting freer or whether at some point everything will just go back to the way it always has been. And I just don't know the answer to that.